Hey, good morning, everybody. Thanks for hang coming and hanging out with us here today. We're playing more Dolmen Wood, and we are just about to hit up the village of Lankshorn. I'm Alex. I'll be the GM for the session. And as always, I am joined here by Winston playing Silver the Elf, Marine playing Lilibeth the Hunter, Ryan playing Sir Joffrey the Knight, and Chris playing Thomas the Minstrel. We are, uh, Isaac is unable to join us, so we will just have the Friar Fitzpatrick kind of fade into the background as we begin play here this morning. Before we begin, uh, just a few comments or uh, give you a little bit of intro to who we are. We are 20 Sides to Every Story. We are a gaming community that streams a lot of our games here on Twitch uploads a lot of our games to YouTube, and in the case of this game, we also uh, put this out there in a podcast format. So we do invite you to come and join us in our Discord server, where we do a lot of the recruiting for all of the games that we play, and we also maintain a community campaign, which is a 5th edition D&D game that is open to all, and we have a number of DMs that are creating content for that set in the Greyhawk world. So come and check that out. We've got a couple of open signups right now for uh, kind of specifically for newer characters. So if you want to create a new level one character and join us for a game, uh, we, would, we would love to see you. So you can find the link to the Discord is there in the chat, or um, if you're listening to this when we're not live, uh, you can find that in the information of the video that you're watching. So as we begin, I think we're going to go back in time just a little bit. So a little bit of a recap. We're kind of at uh, maybe the, the closing of a chapter as we ended the last session. The group that it comprises Silver, Friar Fitzpatrick, Sir Joffrey, and Thomas. The four of you have um, returned from the bay, the fairy realm of Phrygia. You'd stop by to talk to the Druun a bit and use the Dolmen Stones to learn a bit of a secret. And then you set off to rendezvous with Lilibeth at the, I believe the inn is called the Jaunty Horn, the little roadside inn that you had previously stayed at. You'd left your cart there because Sir Joffrey went running into the woods to the south. And so that was like the kind of the last place that you guys were at. So by the time you get there, it'll pretty much be like kind of a full day of having gone through stopping at the Druins and then heading back up to the road that leads to Langshorn and to this this inn where you previously stayed so it'll be evening you know sun will be setting hot humid day and you're all probably sweaty and dirty from several days out roughing it in the woods and the weather is certainly not contributing anything to your your stinky hygiene you're probably ready to get a bath and everything and as you walk into the inn maybe we'll say Lilibeth you have yourself been uh maybe spending some time out in the woods doing some hunting i'll kind of leave that up to your imagination what you've maybe caught but maybe you're coming back to the inn having just spent a day hunting and providing a bit you've been kind of you know uh, earning your keep by providing the inn with some of the some game that it can use in its meal prep and things like that so there's really nobody else but you all and the proprietor present as you return back to the inn. So I'm going to hand off a brace of birds, just a couple, and a couple of rabbits, and one poor, poor pathetic squirrel to the innkeeper, and say, I'll come back and clean this later. And I'm still going to have probably, you know, sweatiness, not to mention some blood. Um, on my body, which I'm not stopping to actually wash off at this particular point, and I am stalking across the inn to Joffrey. And upon seeing this, this beautific, waving smile and happiness, I just grab you really, really hard and give you another one of those big, bracing kisses, and then smack you hard across the top of your head. And do the same thing. Well, not exactly the same go over and hug everybody else. And I said, you just had to walk in there without actually testing. It's a good thing that I decided to come back here and wait for you to come out. But honestly, I had no idea what was going to happen. Don't do that again. 
I'm sorry. But your hair is coming in quite nice, and I say this in a drunken demeanor. I, I look soused. I look, uh... And purple. I look, uh, and purple. Oh, I forgot. I have my hood kind of pulled over a little bit. But yeah, I've got some purple skin. Um, I look very drunk. I look like I've been uh, on a bender for the past couple of days. But I'm complimenting you on your hair that's coming in, because you've, you've just been growing for a few weeks. Looking over at Thomas. Okay. What happened? So we would tell a story maybe around fireplace or, or something nice and glass of wine. But basically, I ate a mushroom and uh, this happened. I'm Did sure we... Drawery? He shrunk down to the side. Little wee little man. I'm certain. It was quite fun. That... It was an adventure. You should have been there. Oh, don't get me started on that. That was the wrong thing to say. I'm sure that we can go ahead and get something to eat. And um, I'm not going to clean the animals in front of you, but I did say I would do that. So I'm going to go ahead and clean the kill, and you guys can come back and watch if you want and talk or go ahead and get yourself set up. So I am going to go ahead and go back and start to prepare that kill so that we can eat it and other people can eat it later. It doesn't go bad. And do we know how long we have been gone? Was that ever? Uh, it was I mean, a solid ten as... days, and so yeah, you'll you'll get what, where this interaction is happening. It's happening on the end of the twenty sixth, so the same day as the previous session uh, when you came back. Okay, so I'm heading to the kitchen, and if anybody wants to follow and talk to me, you're welcome to do that. So that's where I go. Oh yeah, I think Joffrey will follow Lilibet, Lilibeth, and like very giddily kind of update her on everything she missed and sort of end the story with this real like oh the, the king of the king of dreams says i'm gonna find true love and i'm so excited about that it's gonna be amazing well that's awesome that the king of dreams has told you that you're going to find true love um did he tell you how much you were going to have to practice before you'd recognize it Ah. Uh, what was that what'd you say did, did he tell you how often you were going to have to practice? I mean, if you respond every time somebody kisses you by becoming an instant statue, they might just walk away before you get a chance to say something. I'm sorry, Joffrey. I'm, I'm in a foul mood. He didn't say anything about that practice. No, it's, it's okay. You'll have an opportunity to learn better how to respond to what's probably very strange to you right now. But and just a small correction. I don't think it was that. I think it was you were granted a wish from the princess. She said that this was your oh, wish, yeah, that it cool. would come true. Okay, yeah, there you go. So you, you're probably under the presumption there's no work that you have to do because <laughs> this is your reward. Yeah. It's just you're owed it. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm going to, we're going to be adventuring and I'm going to fall into some kind of trap and I, I, it's going to be true love. This is like the perfect setup for a DM in these types of old school adventures. There's always some maiden or mistress that the monster is uh, disguised as in some hallway. Joffrey would be all in on that. That's for sure. So it, it sounds, it sounds like an amazing adventure. And I am grateful that Sir Chai and his love are once again whole. But it really did scare me. It's been 10 days and gave me time to think about how, how close I've become to all of you and how important your survival is to me. And I'm not used to that. So I'm trying not to think about it too hard. So we could probably talk about this later. But I just just don't do that again. Think, your brother, I mean, your poor brother, he was terrified for you for days. We all were. So keep that in mind. You have people who care about you. You can't just go running off. I, I do admit my my head has been in a fog. and um, But I do believe that, you know, now that, uh, that, this, that this has been completed, this quest has been completed, and my wish has been granted, that hopefully my, my head will remain clear and I will be able to better, you know, protect my, my family because, you know, Leaving one of uh, one of our family behind isn't uh, being a good knight and isn't protecting my kin. So I, I recognize what you're saying. Oh, oh, okay. And I'm actually 
internally having a little bit of difficulty processing that now I'm sort of being included in the kinship family of a knight and his extended family and the friar, which is not something that Lilibeth is going to be. I'm going to have to sit with that for a little bit, but th th thank you for, for taking that under advisement. So everything's sort of gutted out. The awful is wherever awful needs to go so that it can be consumed or prepared the way that it needs to be. And um, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just wash this back off of me, and I'll come back out and join you guys for something to drink and hear what everybody else has to say. So that's pretty much what I'm going to do. Any interactions or conversation that Silver or Thomas uh, would be having while that was happening in the kitchen? Mm, I don't think so. I think I'm going to be kind of trying to lay low right now. So I'll maybe like post up in a corner and get out, get out the pipe and kind of like with the hood drawn. Like I'm immediately thinking of Strider from because we're in an inn, mm -hmm. uh, but like posting up in the corner with the pipe, hood drawn over, you know, just trying to like lay low while while we're hanging out. All right. I would be inquiring about getting a bath. Sure. Uh, yep. <laughs> get cleaned up. Before. And also, I'd be interested in buying some new clothes. I'm sure mine are rather soiled and such. So I would also inquire where in. If this is just, is this just a roadside inn? Just a roadside inn. I think you, oh, okay. they, they had given you some like hand me down cloaks or something that you guys had asked about when you trudged out into the the woods but that's probably about all that they have they, they'll tell you once you get to Lancashire and tomorrow they would say um actually that tomorrow is the day of moot which is i think analogous to wednesday is really what that means it's a day of the week but it's significant in that it is the day that in Lancashire, it's a market day so okay. There will be, it's where you can procure a lot more than you could from just like the ordinary shops. People like farmers come into town to sell their goods and things like that. And so it would be a fortuitous day to be buying anything that you might need. All right. We, should, we also have to sell too, right? Like, cause we've got these opals, but they're, they're just gems. Like we gotta, we've got things to offload, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then we do. With this being a roadside inn, I I would inquire along with the bath that they, you know if they have lemoner services or something like that, that or livery services that they could wash my clothes and stuff. So. Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. The proprietor is that same larger man, uh, kind of brawn, very brawny looking. Um, I think he would take everything. He'd he'd say that him and his family can certainly um, take care of all of that for you and draw up the bath and. That'll be what you are doing before um, your evening meal here together. And so, uh, Blilibeth, what is it that you think that is being served? Well, we have at least one of the birds. We'll have to, you know, they have to draw for a little bit. So one of the birds from before is ready. We can have a little bit of of roast guinea fowl or the equivalent. I'm not sure what they're called in Dolmenwood. And then um, maybe a little bit of burgoo, which is a sort of a stew with rabbit and a little bit of squirrel and some fruit vegetables. And all of that is something that I've helped the innkeeper to figure out how to cook because they're not really used to having somebody going out on a daily basis or to go ahead and get food back for them and have the stuff to actually create these meals. Awesome. So that's our meal. So that has all been laid out on the table. So any uh, conversation or... Uh, notable things that you wish to discuss over this meal? Yes. What are we doing next? I mean, we keep looking over at Silver's face. We believe it has something to do with his sword. His sword? Yes. It was a sword from that bogey. That barrel, barrel bogey. If that's when it began. Mm -hmm. I believe I've been cursed but uh, we have a connection and we met someone in the phrygia that uh told us about a sorcerer named egrain in megger's reach who may be able to help me solve this problem possibly at least help me know what's going on but i'm in no rush yeah i can see why you wouldn't be i'm no rush this all finds but we also uh, were able we also were able to utilize the stones Lilibeth, and it was quite fantastic. Got a bird's eye view of an area that's about 60 miles to the northwest-ish. Yeah. Thomas, are you still keeping a map? 
there, Chris? Uh, yes. Yes, I am. Mostly, I should say. Uh, now, I, didn't, I didn't add that one. But, uh, where is the place where the where it was identified that the wizard could help Silver? Is that beyond the area we viewed with the stones? Is it on the way? Is it the description like was north northeast? You don't have as precise like you have the precise sort of location of the castle because of using the stone. So, so they may be in a similar direction. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll, and if Joffrey, um, you know, I mean. I feel fine. I know I don't look very good, but I'm not. Uh, I'm not too worried about it. As long as I'm not making a fool of myself and embarrassing everyone, I'm perfectly happy to continue on until it becomes convenient. So I think we can go to Langshorn, do some business, gear up, maybe check out this castle, and maybe get a tip as to where Maker's Reach might be. No rush. Well, we've definitely had an exciting, eventful and trying 10 days or more. So taking a slow and leisurely approach to things is reasonable to me. Um, Sir Joffrey, do you still need, we were going to come to Langshorn anyway to look for a sword, but is there anything else that you wanted to look for there? I, I don't believe I need a sword anymore. As um, I have been gifted with Sir Chide's sword, but I I do agree that we do have some business to do, and Langshorn would probably be a good place to figure out where, you know, ask ask around, maybe purchase some maps or something, and and figure out where this this wizard may be or that town may be and Hi. uh and then and then make a decision from there where where would be next whether we would head to this town or maybe give a peek further at what the stones gave us vision to because i think that I, I i don't know about everybody else i think my mind is certainly has been on that since that experience that was a, a i've never experienced anything as mystical and enchanting as that and and surely it's leading us somewhere, you know, of great interest. Yes. Well, the, I mean, the I had read about this place and had heard rumors that there supposedly was great treasure and wealth hidden there. However, it is quite a trek, it would seem. And one thing I would like to, which we probably could find out more in Langshorn, who rules that area, or if it's more of a wilds i don't know if that's land that's you know commanded by the goat folk or whoever but it is possible that that place has you know if you've got a local lord or something like that they may not want people to necessarily willy-nilly go traipsing through their uh, property and if i could add just a little bit to thomas and what might be playing out in your mind you're still under the effects of an enchantment and so it could be that Thomas is eager to go to that castle because there could be a way to step foot into Phrygia again. All you know is that there's wards that don't allow such things to come into Dolmenwood within the Ring of Chell, but maybe you could you could feel that experience again if there's maybe some way within the castle to go back there. Because you're, you have that strong desire after drinking that wine to go back to Barry and very specifically uh, Phrygia. Well, I'll make no secret. Um, while you were gone, I gave a lot of thought to what I would do if you didn't come back, because I had to. And I thought for myself, one of the things that I never thought I'd be able to do was to essentially establish my own lodge. And to do that, I need to be able to make a name for myself. And since I'm not sure that you would all understand what I even mean by lodge, when I made the choice to become a hunter, part of the pleasure of it was the idea that I would be able to have a place of my own away from the city, in the wild, in the presence of the creatures that I actually love as much as I also prey on them. 
and I would like to do that in the company of good friends and companions who would also be interested in going on a hunt with me. And I can't do that if I don't find that place and make that name for myself. So going further seems to me a good idea. Not going to find it in Langshorn, but I'll be able to hear rumors and gain more information. We'll get maps. All of this sounds good to me. But that's my aim because I have to do that for myself as much as I care about you. I know I can't always count on you being there or us being together in the way that we have come to sort of count on. Not that I'm saying that you're not trustworthy. It's not that. It's just we don't know what's going to happen. So we do have to keep an eye out for our own interests to make sure that everybody else's interests are also well met. Well, I think that's perfectly fair. And I've never um, been on a hunt with you, but I've heard good things about your skills. I'd love to go. Wonderful. Then we definitely have to get that curse off of you because they'll hear you coming from miles around. He's stumbling about, snapping on tra- twigs, throwing up in the bushes. Come here, birdie. <laughs> Soon her own to a tree. There Ooh. is all... There is also the uh, grimoire that we had found. Oh. Do we, I do not know if that had been mentioned yet. Lilibeth and I look around to make sure that nobody would, within earshot, and I kind of lower my voice or whatever, but say, I believe we found a book that was stolen from perhaps that hag, and I'm not certain if there was, if we had made mention of perhaps returning it to earn favor, or if we wished to keep it. However, I will say that if there is any means with which it could be located, it may be that she would seek to have it returned by finding it, and therefore us. That's- well, that does sound ominous and yes. possible. Well, what did you guys, what did you think? You've had more time to talk about it than I have. Well, we wrapped the book in a lot of stuff, you know, covered it up real good, put it deep in a bag. I, if we just don't look at it or think about it, I think we'll be okay. All it was, where did you find it again? In the crypt, uh, with the barrel bogey had apparently stolen it or something like that. So it was the book that was found in the bedding. I had time to, to look at it. It's had some writing in the beginning where it was, you know, basically property of, and there were three names given, which uh, I won't mention. It's never good when someone has more than one name. It's always a bad sign. Especially when just one name. That's not necessarily good. The book is definitely Eve. It appears to be written in blood. I can't, yeah. Well, I can't imagine the friar wanting to cart that on our journey. Where is he? Sleeping? Like I said, we he's, covered he's it in a lot of stuff. It, it was kind of scary. Uh, Friar would just chime in about stuff. Uh, probably what he would say is that he is interested in purchasing a dog when you get to Lankshorn. Oh. Oh. And maybe stopping by to himself, maybe go and talk with the local cleric or whoever is, presides over the Church of the One True God. So when you get to Lankshorn, I will... Write the friar off by that's where he's going. He'll go to the church and hang out for a bit while you guys okay. do your things. Okay. So, Lilibeth, while we're on the road to Linkshire, if you want some reading material, um, and I'll hand her this scroll that I've nicely rolled up and put a little like a little seal on it. This is the story of the Wint- Winter's Daughter. It's a, an epic poem that I penned, and it's all about Joffrey and Sir Chide and our adventures and. You feature in there quite a few times as well, but uh, for the pieces that are missing, go down to stanza 95 and you can continue on. It's like it's this, this huge fooling scroll. This is what a fabulous, what a fabulous gift. Oh, this is, thank you. Amazing. Oh, it's, I, I should be careful. It's, it's um, my only copy. So when you finished, um, would love your criticisms, but also I'd like to get the copy back. So I can start to... Oh, okay. It. So that reminds me, I need to pick up some paper, parchment, and stuff. So yes, I have things to do in 
in Langshorn beyond making sure that we have at least another 20 pounds of food for Apu on a daily basis. I wonder what your moss friend or your moss dwarf friend would say about your poetry. You guys could compare poetry. <laughs> and what did we do? I, what, did we just let him run away? Like just get off? Like uh, he just ran off? He, no, he went back to Prigwort and he told you That's how right. you could contact him because he, he worked for a brewer there so that's right cool. yeah we, we should we got so many so many things we can do yeah i don't i don't need to introduce more story <laughs> hooks you got you got a good <laughs> list going i think but i'm sure we'll add a few more probably uh, the time we're done too, isn't there like there's a whole ton you it's yeah a whole open world. yeah so many so many there's the the ring of shell there's the grottos so you're, you've only scratched the surface of the grottos yes um yeah, yeah. you could hunt a dragon could right? hunt a dragon well, that, that could be your no that, that would be a legendary hunt <laughs> more <laughs> weapons more arrow bigger sword because if i'm going to hunt that i definitely need something more maybe a spear oh i actually have a spear oh. this um well it's a spear that i took uh, you were there actually that happened but i'll, yeah. I'll say well and i've got this this piggin here, I don't think I need this as much, and I'll hand you the spear. Oh, thank you. Well, that's one less thing to buy, and I'll have to start practicing. I'll take that off my sheet. It was like a, it was like a wavy spear, right? Like the tip was wavy. One of the ones from the from the statues that we took. So Langshorn. To Langshorn. Langshorn. Okay. So anything else that needs to take place here tonight? Pick up. And some sleep. Sleep. Oh, I'm gonna smoke it of the of the pipes before oh. we go to bed. All right, I will join. So I currently only have one use left, but I'm sure I, we could. I happen some. to have. I happen to have five uses of barley blend here. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so I'm gonna burn one of mine just so it's off my sheet, nice and clean. Anybody and else then... using any pipe leaf? We got three. So um, you're gonna you're gonna use yours and then I'll share I'll burn off two, one for me, one for Thomas. Yeah, we'll blend it. So <laughs> this will certainly help you with your digestion here tonight, but uh is there a question that you would all like to spend some time in quiet contemplation racking your brains about? Mm, I, I mean, think that I think Joffrey is just going to think deeply about, you know, kind of to be mindful and and present and consider everybody and be like, what is the best course of action for us next? You know, where uh, according to the needs of the group, what you know, where where should we go? Where do I feel like we should go? And then that's, that's the, the question that we all concentrate on. Then is I don't know if I could objectively give you anything on that, but I don't. Well, then I, don't, yeah, I guess what I, what would be a good question then? Where does the DM want I, us to go? Yeah, <laughs> where do you want us to go? I would be prepared the most. If we've, I mean, I'll throw out a su suggestion if it's that all of us are kind of putting our minds together as we're as we're doing this or whatever. I would like to know what the best course of action to do with this grimoire. I mean, this is something that I think is, it's ugly, it's bad. I don't want to keep it for too long, you know? Uh, I would like I would like to get rid of it. Okay. So maybe a thought on um, either, yeah, whether we should return it or... Or, or burn it. Burn it. <laughs> yes. So... Uh... I, I'm pretty sure, Thomas, you're the one with the highest intelligence score. So why don't we have you do this roll? That is a 12 plus 4 is a 16. Okay. So based on what you know, you are pretty sure that this belongs to a pretty nasty customer, whoever the hag is, whoever that person is, that, that entity that has all those names. With the book, and probably only with a token such as the book, you might be able to get audience with this character without it you probably would have an adversary on your hands so it might be the only opening you have to ever for whatever your reasons might be talk with them destroy the book you probably have a good sense that burning it is probably not an option it probably will not work that you would have to you would have to find some some means of destroying it probably of fairy origin uh to counteract its evil or another thought maybe that comes as a piece of this is this does seem like an item of great evil 
that might be of interest to the Church of the One True God, and that bringing it maybe to, say, Castle Brackenwold, or the heart of where the Church's power resides in the Dolmenwood, might, might grant you some immediate attention from some very influential players let's say so maybe those are kind of like the three options you could you could seek a means of destroying it yourself probably a fairy origin you could return it to its owner and see what what boons that might grant you or you could return it to the church so i would uh, guess yes i would guess yes means, i would say if the church was going to then make a move against them it would be pretty clear yes right because we would have been the ones who started it you know Right. But I mean, it's just my, that's just Joffrey kind of riffing while we're, you know, smoking, smoketh of the pipeth and we're kind of talking about it, you know? Yeah. Well, and getting those three options, obviously group decision on which course of action to take. I'm personally, I'm fine with any of those options. The church has its own issues. Uh, that we know about from previous things that they're, you know, du duplicitous in actually maintaining somebody who is kind of illegally running the empire, you know, so they are not all that good per se. Um, no. So, yeah. And uh, I mean, jo Joffrey has definitely learned in the Dolmenwood that, yeah, black is not black and white is not white. And there's a lot of shades in between. So he's certainly like entertaining the fact that gaining the favor of some powerful witch in the Dolmenwood could m maybe be useful, you know? But at the same time, you know, kind of his, the way his upbringing it was in his, you know, relationship to his brother, the friar, he's sort of leaning more towards, well, if we're going to use this for political favor, we might as well use it to gain favor for my brother in the church. You know, sure. I mean, and then we have the other option, which is just bury it and pretend we never saw the freaking thing. You could leave it like a Gideon Bible in the, the drawer <laughs> as you leave the inn. <laughs> yes. What an amazing Great way like, to like, I wash my hands of this. This is somebody yeah. else's problem now. Maybe it's like the best place to hide it. Like, cause nobody opens that drawer. Nobody reads that thing. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Except for the poor innkeeper. Uh, innkeeper is cleaning the room. Pulls it open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hair flies out and twirling evil. Well, you know, we found it under a mattress. We just find an appropriate mattress and Well, it might be something that Madame Shantywood would be interested in as well. I don't want to give something like that to Madame Shantywood. Well, I wouldn't mind visiting Madame Shantywoods again. <laughs> yeah, oh. we, we uh we do we did promise Joffrey. <laughs> That's right. Yes. A dust shall we fast forward here to the twenty seventh? You'll wake up. Yes. It'll be another hot, humid day. Not much has changed there. Settle up with the... It only takes you maybe about... You're on the road. Um, it takes you maybe about three hours or so to get there. Not not too much further. Um, so it'll be like kind of late, late morning by the time you get there. So the road is kind of raised up. It's kind of like sandy banks on the sides before you hit the tree line um, that leads into the thick of the forest but eventually as you're getting closer to Langshorn and you're just maybe like 10 minutes out or so the forest kind of widens and starts to kind of create the the clearing of where the town is and you see that there is a um, patrol sorry these are some goat folk that seem to be doing some kind of a drill they have like a commander who is wearing a helmet and they're all dressed in a tabard wearing an oh. emblem that looks like this so well, they're not really paying attention to you as you're coming down the road it's just like a thing that you notice that is that is happening do you notice that you continue on the road, and pretty soon you are seeing the little thatched rooftops of the homes and buildings in Lankshorn. A couple of points of interest. The tallest building is very clearly a high, uh, a steepled church that kind of is pretty much central to the town. You will see a raised mound to the north of the road where there are some dolmen stones. That's interesting. And um, to the south, you can see that there is uh, sort of this barn-looking structure, or a, maybe a farmhouse is, 
a better description of a farmhouse that is situated right alongside a graveyard. Surrounding the village, there is plenty of pastoral scenery, farms, oh. maybe some smaller farms nearer to the village, but you can see kind of further out, specifically to the south of Langshorn, it seems like that's all farmland through the rolling hills. So okay. no forest that direction. And so to put this in kind of game terms, probably a lot of groups will use Langshorn as this is like the starting point for your session one. We had a different kind of starting point, but this is like an entry point into Dolmenwood from people coming south. But just due to oh. the nature of you guys were trying to be kind of undercover coming into the woods, you came up a different way. So this is a completely technical question. We were pinging on the map and I could see the pings, but I can't see anything else except for our little token right now. Maybe refresh. Okay. I the the rest of you can see the map, right? I'm having the I, same issue. I couldn't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's probably a lighting thing. I wasn't sure if that was intentional, so... Yeah, even with the refresh, it comes up looking like the little circle with oh, our... It didn't save my settings from earlier, oh. so there you go. Okay. So that is what you see. There is very clearly in the center of town. There's little uh, carts and kind of like fruit stands and vegetable stands and people with like kind of little makeshift pens where some livestock is being sold. So there's like totally like a market day kind of thing happening at the center of town. Yeah. So what do you all wish to do as you're coming into this village? Uh, my interest is immediately piqued by the dolmen stones that are up there just to the north on that hill is that what those are yes Ooh. i find it odd perhaps that i mean if there's a drone living this close to a major town like this could these right, possibly the be drone, unwatched because they said usually the drone protect the dolmen stones right correct well maybe he's a, ha a happy jovial drone as opposed to all the other drones that we've met that's a possibility there doesn't seem to be anything that would prevent you from just strolling up there and taking a look. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that would definitely pique our interest. I'm, I'm interested. I mean, is this like, is it like touristy attraction level? <laughs> dolmen stones, you know, it's like Stonehenge. <laughs> like there's like little, little tourist <laughs> man. Get your dolmen stone trinkets here. <laughs> like all sanitized, <laughs> like people in June costumes. So uh, maybe as you're going up there and you're thinking, like, could this just be something like that? Like. Maybe it's not real. They there's there's definitely like a like debris, maybe like I don't know, just like like garbage, like trash, and maybe like bones that have been cast aside. The stones themselves are moss covered, but in taking a look at them, it looks like there's pretty crude, like graffiti, and I don't know why should there not be phallic symbols like like etched into a stone right here just because it's you know fairy tale like kids are kids um so there's like evidence that like these are heavily graffitied and kind of desecrated a bit probably by some some locals maybe no. there right. maybe there's no drone at all i can't i mean given the welcome we got i'm not seeing any signs that teenagers are being blasted off of hills yeah i was just thinking the same thing and the other stones that we'd seen they didn't have moss on them or anything like that correct i mean these are not the ones different. you've seen yeah. yeah and the when the drone when we used the dolmen stones with the drone there was was there any indication of like understanding how to use them or is it just like the drone have to use them like in our for, for us to like show us stuff or whatever so um to answer your question i want to make sure that my my explanation gets in here clean so basically those that stone that you guys had used to find horrible like keep there's like specific ways to use that set of stones right these stones might be different and like maybe every set of stones has its own, you know, command words or rituals or, or ways of, of activating them. Gotcha. These stones are a little bit different also. Um, the ones that you guys had looked at had that kind of central stone that was cleft in the middle. These ones are um 
kind of maybe more Stonehenge, and then they've got kind of like a stone that lays prone on top connecting to. And so they kind of have this feel of almost like archway or portal. So different. I yes. dare you walk through one of them. Oh, clearly people have walked through them. To to. <laughs> yes. Yeah, jo Joffrey will walk through, you know, walk through it. If Joffrey, you walk through one of these archways and nothing happens. I'll that you know. As I walk through, I'll go. And Lilibeth has to laugh at that. That's very funny. Oh, well, I'm getting bouncy. Should we just take a quick look around, see if we see anything out of the ordinary? But right now, it looks like the world's worst. Well, maybe not the world's worst, but certainly no different than any other teenage trysting location that I've ever seen. Yeah, and doing the, in my quick look around, what I want to be looking for is, do I see any symbols on these stones that actually resemble symbols that were on the others that we saw? These do not have any symbols other than like the end of the graffiti. So you, you don't see anything arcane etched into them. Okay. This profane but, and silly things. But on the other ones, we did. On the other ones, the other ones did, yes. Okay. Just winged up. Yeah. Wouldn't it be a strange coincidence that the druid also used phallic symbols for their, <laughs> their symbols? And you're like, right. this one. All right. Bad it would day. seem... Seems like we found like some sort of defunct dolmen stones or, or even maybe a um, recreation of some sort. Yeah, that would... Thinking. That would be what I would what I would guess. Uh, perhaps a question for the next drone we run across if they know whether these are actually or folks real. in town. Yeah. Well, then I think we have to go and find the folks in town. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and plus we'll probably want to scope out. You know, I know we're just getting here and it's early in the day, but uh, we'll probably want to scope out our options for where we'll be spending the night too. Mm -hmm. It's best to do it now, otherwise we'll have very little choice by the time we get around to it. We may already have little choice since this is a known event. So based on oh. a couple of the things that you've talked about, just to give you some options, obviously the church is going to be a, a destination, at least for the friar. I'm not going to like get into detail on this, but he will purchase a dog. There'll be someone that has some hounds uh, for sale, and uh, certainly like anybody could, but he's he specifically asked if he could do that. So what should I take out of the pool? Oh, I believe it's 25, but let me just double check that. Yes, 25 gold pieces, and he will be buying a bloodhound. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh, that'll be nice for finding herbs and stuff. Yes. And identifying them, probably. And Apu can take rides on his back. That will be so exciting. <laughs> We're going to look really cool rolling into town, yeah. man. Let me tell you. Yeah. But other options include just generally like heading down to the market and doing some shopping. I imagine that's probably on the agenda. Yes. Yeah, to sell some stuff, maybe pick up some more rations for backup food. Definitely yes. need. As far as places to rest, there does seem to be an inn. And there also is a tavern in stables, and they seem to be separate things. So you probably go have to go to the tavern in stables to deal with the, your your packed animal in your cart, and then lodging would be at the the inn. Other places, of course, include the you've heard that there's a a blacksmith in town, a legendary blacksmith or a notable blacksmith. You'll see a sign that's in maybe indicates an apothecary. I think Joffrey would still like to go to the blacksmith just because we have a number of weapons that we've acquired that maybe we could barter, trade, get identified, and and maybe see if he could do some sort of personalization to Sir Chide's sword for me. Yeah, and I'd, I would like to, I mean, I'd, I don't know if there's any mechanical thing to upkeep of armor and stuff, but I would want I mean, the number of fights and everything that we've been in. I'm sure there's little nicks on my armor that I could give to the blacksmith to have him fix it and stuff like that. Sure. Uh, should we move to that piece? Yes, please. Sure. All right. So uh, you all make your way then to a slate-roofed building. There's a little uh, kind of pebble path that leads up to the front door. And probably has the heftiest looking chimney of any of the buildings that you have seen here and it is active there's a plume of smoke escaping up into the atmosphere and uh curiously like not really much signage like indicating 
uh, you probably have to talk to some people to like kind of get directions to head to this place. But it's almost as if the reputation of the blacksmith is such that he doesn't even need to really advertise his shop here. And you enter in to his uh, workshop and you will uh, see all about the standard uh, tools and his anvil and the forge and all of that is is located within the workshop that seems to be adjoined to this building. The gentleman that you see kind of ringing his hammer, he's working on some horseshoes, is a slim man. You would size him up to be in his late 40s. He has black slicked back hair and his eyes just are maybe set kind of kind of far apart it kind of he almost has this like almost alien looking appearance a bit and silver you probably pick up right away he must have some some kind of fairy blood or something he's just got too many features about him that kind of give him an elvish touch even his ears maybe just slightly slight bent to them and so he looks up at you as you you enter in and he says, he's kind of like sizing up your armor a bit. And he says, well, I guess I can imagine why, why you're here. Show me what, what all you need worked on. I, I'm just about done with this, this work that I am doing. I can probably get to what you have this afternoon yet. Well, I, uh, I, for one, could use uh, some slight repairs on my armor. Chain, you know, some of the, some of the links are uh, broken and such. And also... I was wondering if you might be able to identify this sword's craftsmanship, the silvered sword that we found, to see if he would be able to tell, if, if recognize if it was dwarven make, fairy make, if he has any inkling. To... He will take a look at it, and he, he will tell you that it is a fine craftsmanship. He would guess that it is of human make. Um, some of the design choices maybe about it uh, sort of indicate that it is likely from the south. Very good. How about and this one? And I'll, I'll pull Alpham off and just like, boom, kind of drop it down. And his eyes get big. Like you have his, the entirety of his attention <laughs> as he is like looking over this. He's like, this sword is magnificent. This is, this is art. Wherever did you get such a thing? Oh, you know, out and about questing into barrows and slaying baddies this blade is clearly of fairy origin do you know who its maker is oh i was hoping that you might have some i thought you might have a potential knowledge about the fairy well not as much as i would like it is said that my great grandfather is half elvish and that there's elf blood that runs through my family but um Sadly, he passed before before I was ever really able to form. I've always been curious about that side of my family history. Well, well I appreciate you taking a look. We'll take it back. Since we're looking at swords, can we look at the bronze one too? Yes, he will take a look at that. And he would kind of turn up an eyebrow. He's like, this is a very curious piece of history that you have here. It would seem that this is a blade of... Bregel make, at least going off of this inscription. Bregel? And um, he'll kind of say, yes, Bregel. He's kind of looking at, at you all kind of funny. He's like, I... And he's kind of stammering a bit, like, go goatish people. Oh! And probably based off of this, you're going to realize he's avoiding using the word goat folk. Yeah, that was exactly... <laughs> And Bregel is the proper name. Well, thank you. And he's uh, like, he's he's kind of he's like you you all aren't I, from here, are you? No, I no. I I give him two gold pieces, and I say thank you for having giving us that bit of information that could have been let's just say a cause for uncomfortable situation. Yes, I mean even you know not myself, but m most of the people here in Langshorn are human. But nearly everybody has a bit of goatish blood, so... so Bregel I, I, blood. Bregel blood, yeah. Yes, bre <laughs> yes, Bregel blood. He, he, will, he will ask you, um, so you probably don't know this name then, Bregel. Never heard it. Well, it Are is... Are you a, familiar? Oh, yes. Um, very much so. Um, this is a very important person in the history of the Bregel. Bregel is the... Oh, maybe some would say the, the mother 
of kind of revered as almost a liberation figure amongst amongst the Bregel. For it was she that threw down the chains of the Droon when the Bregel were, shall we say, under their oppression. Bregel's a she? Yes. In fact, all of the all of the Bregel noble houses claim or seek to claim lineage from her. Interesting. So this is not a sword that we should be selling on the open market would be my guess. Oh, you should you could certainly fetch quite a price for this um if you were to. Um I think many of the Bregel noble houses would seek to have such a blade hanging above their mantle. That would be my thought would be and and this, you know, kind of whispering aside not so that the shopkeep doesn't hear is like, you know, this could gain us favor with one of these, you know, Briggle houses here if we if we should need it. This is our get out of jail free card. Well and Langshorn is ruled by a Briggle house, correct? I believe so. I mean just assuming from the army doing their exercises outside of town, I would assume so. Yeah. Well and the and the inn that we were at just three hours out had Pictures of the of I think the Bregel, the Bregel Lord. Are you bringing I this up to, with um, the blacksmith? Yeah, I mean, I I would be saying this out loud, uh, just amongst us. Okay, I can address that. But uh, Winston, did you have something? So you say this uh, this is, so Bregel is the people, and Braggle is the descendant or the ancestor. Haragle. Haragle. Yep. Haragle. You say that there are many that claim to have uh, descended from her. It's sort of a sort of a um, contested history. Is it possible this is a, a boast, a forgery, what this blade is? Someone who's claiming a connection? Um, th this, he would say that the sword doesn't necessarily indicate any connection to the bloodline, but uh, ah, was was certainly okay. probably used by someone. It, was, it, was, it, it would be from the era in which the Droon um, and Goat War was fought. Okay. Okay. So um, maybe not directly connected to that ancestor, not even claiming that. But yeah. From that time period. But kind of going along with some of what you're asking about and what maybe Thomas is bringing up, who, who is the ruler of Langshorn? So Langshorn has its own uh, Burkmaster, but then the kind of the territory, I guess you could say where you are, is ruled by, I'm going to pull up my notes here so I don't, Screw you up with the wrong name. So this area here is ruled by Lord Malbleet. Yep. And the flag Sorry. and the tabard in which you saw those soldiers wearing, that is his house sigil. So I, I have to ask a question, because um, I know that the goat term is, is quite offensive. Malbleet. Is it some sort of a coincidental name, or is there a? Or would they be offended if I drew attention to the bleeding component of that, and then the mal bleeding? He says, "Lord <laughs> Malbleed is a very humorless man. I would not. I would not. <laughs> he's very cruel, and be increasingly so. So he's like a, in your opinion, like a bad ruler, a, a mean guy. Ah." Uh... Yeah. I'm starting nudging you really hard. Joffrey, you can't ask him that. Well, I just, it sounds that way. Look. I'm sorry, I, you know, I didn't mean to. It is no secret amongst us Langshorners that there are more and more people that are being put in the stocks. And more and more people who have gone missing for extended periods oh, of time. Fair enough. Just I mean... for your benefit, perhaps you are very unclear about what the political reality is here. But Lord Ramius, or sorry, uh, Lord Malbleet contests the legitimacy of his half brother, Lord Ramius. Some years back, Lord Malbleet dug up some genealogical records that suggest that he is perhaps of polar blood and can trace his lineage back to Hragel more directly than his half-brother, and thus should be the true ruler of these lands that make up the, the High Wold. Uh, and th there was definitely some years of some more direct conflict between the two sides. Lord Hogwarsh, Baron Hogwarsh, is the human ruler 
within the hierarchy of things, right? So you got the Duke of Brackenwold, who rules everything, is the ultimate authority of everything, the eyes of the Empire and that whole structure. Under him, you have barons. And on this side, the west side of the River Hammoth, this is all the jurisdiction of Baron Hogwarts. And he he presides over all of these goat nobles, these Bregel noble houses. It was his calculation when this when this schism happened that he took a half measure and he said, Lord Ramius, you get all of the territory to the to the west, and and Malbleak gets everything to the east, and he split their the go the Bregel lands into two, and they're now ruled by two two houses. So this is sort of a, you know, the ruler that has no cultural, like, idea of anything just took, like, this really boneheaded move and just said, oh, we're going to split the two and you both get, you both get something. And I've solved the problem and it has never been solved. And it so... Was Hogwarts was the... Brother? Yes. Yep. Oh, no. Uh, Baron Hogwarts is the human ruler. Oh, he's the one that... He's the yes. one that made the decision about splitting the two houses. The The brother is Lord Remius. Remius. That's right. Okay. Yeah. I'm a human, wow. so clearly I understand the intricacies of the Bregel, you know, culture. So I'm going to solve... I need to come in here and solve this. Yes. Right. And I would say that the blacksmith will probably give you the, the feeling that Baron Hogwarts isn't too interested in ruling. And that's his opinion of him is he's a lazy... He's a lazy um, individual. He just sits, you know, down in the high ankle and doesn't doesn't pay much attention to political affairs and is more interested in drinking and whoring than. Sounds like my kind of guy. Might need to what about, introduce what about Ramius. <laughs> he yeah. he might not have a strong opinion himself about Lord Ramius. His life isn't really impacted much by his rule. Um, since he's not living within his territory. Okay. I'm going to ask, but hopefully, again, not intentionally, this is not intentionally a, an offensive question, but do the Bregel have any sort of magic? He would say that Bregel often do seem to have some command of the arcane. He would say that Lord Ramius very loudly and proudly boasts of his sorceress ability. Oh, then given the nature of the sword, potentially... He might be one of the first of the Bregel that we might want to talk to about the sword, if indeed we are we intend to find out more about the sword and do it in a way that's in our best interest. And he would tell you that it, should that be your intention, uh, keep your wits about you, but you would be able to meet with him. His, he doesn't live directly in Langshorn. He only maybe shows up in Langshorn maybe once a month to meet with the Burkmaster and talk about local affairs. But uh, Lord Malbleak can more often be found at his manor house, which is some miles north of Langshorn at a place called Red Wraith Manor. Okay. So, and then here's something a little bit more, more mundane. I We also found this mace and like... Thomas, I would really like it to be in its best possible condition. Can we do that too? Sure. We'll just say like at the sphere. We'll say like a All gold, a gold a piece for the any items that you want him to recondition or maintain. Okay. And yeah, I would, I'd like to get I my armor say, repainted. Let's say Joffrey has chain mail and he might be interested in maybe selling that and purchasing some plate. And then yeah. also to, uh, having him look at this horse head axe. See if he if there's anything identifying about it. Perhaps sell that, and then he also wanted to inquire about you know Sir Chide's sword. Probably has some kind of inscription, you know, with Sir Chide's name, and he wants to like add to that. What is it, Lady S Snowfalls at Dawn uh, forever to the to the hilt of the sword? Okay, he will. T he'll tell you pretty explicitly. He's not in the business of buying like hand me down oh. equipment. Like he sells his his stuff made with his hammer and his, his skill. Oh, okay. um, if you want to like sell it to him for scrap, like he'll give you like five gold for everything. Is there somewhere in town to like sell equipment like that? Or is it, he'll tell you, you could, that you, could done? you could go to the market and attempt to see if you could find someone who's interested in buying it. We need to offload these gyms anyways, Joffrey. So I think maybe we can put all the things up and post up a little stall and, yeah, yeah, fair enough. So we've 
seem to have placed a lot of trust in our blacksmith, but I think your reputation precedes you. Might I get your name, sir? Jeremy Whipston Puddingfoot. That's lovely. And then I guess I would ask him about some, you know, the price of some plate armor, and then also, like, maybe shields, like... If he has any exceptional shields, that might be better than my shield or something. Um, he doesn't have anything, nothing that would mechanically be better. But uh, plate mail would cost you 60 gold. All right, I'm going to do that then. Jeremy, I do have a question about the Ring of Stones as we entered. Is that a makeshift knockoff of the legendary dolmen stones and then desecrated as a warning to for Droon to stay out? Or are those actually real stones? He, he would admit to you that he doesn't really have knowledge of such things. He can tell you that there are a lot of rumors about those stones. Generally speaking, the townsfolk to try to stay away from them as best as possible. Some believe that they are associated with witchcraft. Others um, have suggested that it might be they might be used by the Nag Lord. There oh. is one uh, pernicious rumor that suggests that um, crying the word "Lily Glables" at night will summon a gro a goat crone named Shub Nana, who will whisk away an unwanted child. We've heard that name before. Is that the name from inside? Shub Nana? Is that from inside the book that we did we hear I, that name? I am looking. Because I remember, like, in my head being like, ah, oh, Sha Nana. Yeah, the name I does hear... sound familiar. But it could be that they have a similar formation as yeah. the Hags. It was one of the names. Okay. It was. Nice. Hmm. And what what was, what was that again? Lee Lee? He says it like really quick. He's like, maybe I should just write it down for you. <laughs> he would be he's excellent. got a little superstition about it himself. <laughs> sure. I'll say and more than once. You say you state it in the middle of the stones and you summon her? Yes. It's morning star. Sorry. Okay. Yes, that's tempting. That's a very specific rumor. That word is very... Does it have any meaning? Is that Bregel speak or anything like that? Um, he he says that's an interesting theory that it may it, it definitely comes up in a number of you know children's it's like children's Abra rhymes, kind of yeah, like kind of like um, if you're singing Park. ring ring around the rosy, like there's probably like a ring around the rosy song that kids sing and. You know, if you get Duck Duck Goose, you're the one that's out of the circle. You're right. You got Shub Na Nod. You get Shub Na Nod, yeah. Shub Na Na! Other questions or things that you wish? Maybe at some point here, of course, he's got a business to run, and so you're buying you're buying some basic stuff from him, but he would suggest to you that um, if you ever want anything enchanted, he does have... Oh. That is what he is known for, are his enchantments Ooh. that he can place into weapons that he forges. I guess that's what I was sort of asking with the shield thing. Uh, he doesn't have anything necessarily that would... Uh, he's more known as a weaponsmith than he is anything okay. else. And so he is able to produce a number of enchantments. Among them are... He's got one that would grant a plus two bonus to damage against a very specific foe, but it does require that you bring him back something, a sample of the blood or hair of that target or that specific type of target. That one costs 500 gold pieces. Like a hair off a of Joffrey. You now have a plus two uh, Joffrey Slayer. Two more. Yeah, the Night Slayer. There's another enchantment that he can do. Uh, vengeance. It grants a plus one bonus to attack rolls against opponents who have been wounded by the wielder in a combat. That one is 250 gold pieces. There's an enchantment. And, and that's a... Can he grant that onto a weapon that you already have, or you have to purchase a weapon from him with that on it? It would have to be, like, it has to be forged with, like, it goes along with a blade that he makes and crafts. Yeah. It's a part okay. of the process, yeah, because he has to forge that blade in the moon, in moonlight, of the moonlight of a full moon. 
So if one was to commission one of these, what would be the turnaround time? He will say it sort of depends. Like he, it had like a full moon has to, has to occur. So that's really like the turnaround time is waiting for that occurrence. See my calendar here. Uh, as far as the evening that you are currently on is a half moon. So. You'd have a little bit to go. Yeah, you have a, like three three weeks before the next full moon. Um, the other enchantments that he has, he has one called Backbiter, which grants a plus one bonus to attack rolls against a retreating foe. And there is a, and that one's a hundred gold pieces. And there is another enchantment uh, that he can put on a blade which allows you to, I guess, name a command word, and you can call out that name, and it, your blade will emit moonlight in a 30-foot radius for one hour. Oh. Really? How much is that? That one's 400 gold pieces. That's pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> that may become come in useful just to hang on for us to have in the pouch for one of us to use as a weapon when we're in, like, a dungeon or something. Mm -hmm. I'm like, imagine like just a dagger that you can just like hold up like a glow stick. That'd be pretty cool. And these, en very... these enchantments are only one per weapon, or can you double these up? One per weapon. I feel like the light, the moonlight one would be a good one because then we can save on an hour's worth. You said for one hour? One hour. That we can save on an hour's worth of torches using a weapon. This thing pays but for I, itself I, over the life of all the torches you save. Yes. Yeah. Over the life of an elf, yeah. you start recouping your money. I don't know. What do you guys think? I mean, we have uh, right now in the treasury bin, we've got 1541 gold. And then we also have some stuff to sell. So we may be, mm -hmm. you know, raising that up. My personal take is I think it'd be absolutely amazingly cool to have a moonlight weapon of some kind. Just thematically. Agreed. like That would be just like whether or not it like pays for itself because torches are one gold. So it'd be like 400 torches worth. But uh, still, like imagine well, the utility. You have one weapon. That's your torch. That's amazing. Well, who would want to wield it then? And and then what sort of blade would we put it on? Because I'm, I'm, I mean, Sir Chide Sword's a plus two sword. That's to attack and damage. I'm, I'm pretty sure Joffrey's yeah. just going to be using that because it's going to be the best all the way around. So it would probably be best for someone else to carry this weapon or to hold it. What about Thomas? Like Thomas, you've got two. You carry two, right? Is one of them mundane? Yeah, I mean, I I use a dagger and a longsword. Actually, at at this point, I use a short sword. Mm -hmm. So we and in a addition to the and a long sword. So could we take your short sword and you know replace it with a moonlight short sword? Sure. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I think that's a good idea, and I would be willing to take the four hundred out of our our party's gold for that if everyone agrees. Okay. This is for a short, so it would be 407 gold pieces total. Okay. We are down to 1,141 gold pieces. Okay. And so, Thomas, I'm assuming you just put that right on your uh, character sheet. It sounds like maybe the most immediate things that you guys are going to do is maybe go to the, well, okay. Order of operations. You've got the inn where you can secure lodging, and then you've got the tavern stables where you can get your cart and everything taken care of. Because right now it's just like sitting out on the street, right, and not really being watched by anybody. Right. So would you go so to the might... tavern stables first, and then go to the inn? I think so. I okay. Think that would... With that in mind, maybe we take a break here so we can take a bio break and and whatever else you guys need to do, and we'll come back in five ten minutes. That sounds wonderful. All right. Awesome. Thanks, everybody, for hanging out with us here this morning. You're buying lots of rerolls during the shopping <laughs> episode. That's awesome. We'll see. <laughs> Maybe we can get some rolls to happen here uh, at some point. Yeah, exactly. All right. We'll see you in a bit. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Thanks for joining us for the second uh, second part of our Dolman Wood game here this morning. Uh, the characters have just arrived in Lankshorn and are... Uh, had, have done some shopping and are now on route to head to the sorry are on route to head to Bogway's Tavern and Stables to get their cart uh, taken care of and 
Uh, it's probably about lunchtime, so possibly your characters are thinking about trying to get some food and such. You make your way to a ramshackle two-story establishment. It's very... I guess everything about this place just kind of feels a little off. Like, the windows are all irregular sizes. None of it... None of it to conformity. As you make your way up to the threshold of the door, you can see there's a big bucket. Iron bucket that is there that's full of water. And it looks like a brush. Um, okay. Just to wash our boots. Maybe not a brush. Okay. Let me change that. A sponge. To wash the ground? That's our bath. Thomas goes first, then. Up above, you can see uh, above the door, there is a sign that hangs overhead with a grinning toad holding a frothy mug of ale. Interesting. I open the door and... I'm not familiar with the custom of a bucket of water and a sponge, so... Can you throw your horse to clean it? So you open the door and you can see there's the, the common room is a lofty space. All of the tables in here look pretty wobbly. The stools are all different sizes. Like, like there isn't one piece of furniture here that's the same as the next. Like, it, it, you see that there's a balcony up overhead. Um, that kind of overlooks the common room, stairways that lead up there. There's an iron candelabra that uh, hangs down, bearing dozens of fat candles that hang from chains from the rafters. And they're, they're lit. It creates a bit of a warm uh, feel. And you can see behind the bar is a tortoise shell cuddled patterned grimalkin that is serving up some drinks to some individuals. And you open the door and you step in, and she says... No, no, no! Go! The sponge! The sponge! What are you doing? We don't what, know! What, what do you want us is, to do? Your swords! Douse them in the water! Come on! Oh, okay. Pull my sword off and... Just swords? Sponge it off. And with that, the Grimmelkin seems, like, satisfied. You know, ask him what the, what the story with that is. What, what's that all about? Is that a custom for around here? Yeah. You don't want to bring in bad luck, do you? Oh. Bad luck is bad. It no, cleans your swords. Sword, yeah. Or something. And I didn't hear a knock, by the way. Just... Want to go back out and try that again? Uh, there you I'll... go. Yeah, I'll go out and wash my sword and knock on the door. Yeah. Me, I'll do. Sorry, right, we were born in a barn. Yes. Clearly. Okay, you're going to need... You're going to be stabling your horse there? Horse and cart, yes. Yep. All righty. And four rounds of your uh, something frothy. Gribblekin just I... yells out, Sarge! Sarge! And then you see this, what you imagine is an aging, old, short-horned Bregel with uh, kind of white fur. Lots of scars on the body of this kind of, kind of hunchbacked. He comes out from like kind of the kitchen area and he just kind of like does a little salute to you all. And he's just slowly kind of lumbers out the 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 door and the grimalkin asks so what, what would your pleasure be what can i get you uh might i suggest we have a specialty beverage here nippers it's kind of a cordial but uh if you haven't had it i'm guessing kind of seeming like you're a little new very i'll take one uh, i will too yes four nippers all right so the stabling um, will cost you four silver pieces and 20 silver pieces for the round of drinks. So 24 total. And she puts in front of you this uh, kind of wooden wooden cup and you, you bring it to your mouth and there's like a heavy smell of like catnip. And it's like kind of repugnant, this beverage, like... Any of you take a sip of it? Of course, I'm going to take I a will. sip of it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, it's gross. It's so nasty. Oh, no. Mm. I'm not going to say poison. Yummy! I mean, you can all, uh, I don't know that it'll matter, but you can all do a con check to see if you move up the level of inebriation or not if you drink it. Okay. Uh, you want to roll over con or under con? Under. Okay. Well, I roll a four, so. I rolled a five, so I'm good, but I'm going to do a save versus poison. What What was the total in silver pieces? It was like... 24. Okay, I roll it again. 20, 24, so that's like two and a half gold pieces. Yeah. So I'm under. So I think... I'm able to stomach the drink. 
Yes. And I'm not drunk. So she's uh, serving you, and you're looking about. There's a fair number of people in here, but there is one that's in the corner of the tavern <laughs> that has a cloak up, smoking a pipe, all shady-like, and you just get the feeling that they're observing you all. And at some point, you even see them pull out like a little bit of parchment and an ink pen with a little vial, and is like scrawling some notes hmm. human maybe late 20s and looking right uh, at us or kind of we're just picking it up you're kind of picking it up it's not it, it's okay. definitely indirect they're not staring at you or anything but you pick right. up on their noticing like you're this focus of their attention you know silver i'm getting deja vu this gentleman in the corner is reminding me of kind of your look in your from last night he does look nice doesn't he a good whole thing. Was I pulling it off as well as he was? No. I think better. You know, <laughs> the, the brooding was much more broody um, last night. I felt it. It was a good performance. Good, good. I've often found when ever somebody is observing you, one of the best things to do is send them over a drink to let mm. them know. Oh. And nippers for the drink. You can have mine. Let's, Let's all combine. One glass. <laughs> That's right. Here, could you... <laughs> Could you take this over to that Yahoo? You, he already told me you don't like the nippers. How do you how do you like it? Do them anyway. Okay. No, don't send it to him anyway. What is he drinking? Can we notice what he's drinking? She tells you he's been drinking mead. Yeah, we'll send him over a mead. And does anybody need to take the flavor of this nippers out of their mouth? Yes. So make it a round of meads for us and one for the gentleman in the corner. All right. So five meads. What'll that run us? It'll be 60 silver pieces. 60 silver. So that'll be three gold. Or no, six, six gold. Six gold. Those are expensive. And if you're drinking, you can do a con check. If you roll over your con, you've failed. You don't have to report it to me. Just track. You've got one level of inebriation. So you send the mead over to him, and uh, the Grimalkin gets gets up from behind the bar and delivers it over there. And you can see he, like, has, like, kind of a puzzled look for a moment. But then, like, he, he pulls his, like, hood back, and he just seems like he's kind of, like, accepted, like, you know he's there. And so he raises the glass and takes a sip. Very fair complexion, blonde hair, blue eyes. He's almost got, like, an air of nobility about him. Um, like Joffrey probably picks that up that maybe just like kind of the way that he does like his salute to you feels very much like in like a, a noble tradition. Yeah. Do we wave him I think, over? I think with that, we, we maybe approach him, huh? Hmm. I'd say wave him over here. Or yeah, maybe we'll wave him over. Then. Join us. Join us where we stand. But yeah, sure. He, he gets up from, from his kind of low stool <laughs> that he was sitting on. Um, scooches it back and then starts to make his way across the room to you all and he like kind of raises the glass and he says well met friends uh I suppose introductions are in order uh, yeah, we, we noticed your brood it was quite a brood over there well uh my name you could call me Seertel. 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 well of a and well met right. I have the feeling you already know our names. Uh, I have names, but I don't know who to ascribe them to. Uh, Lilibeth, I presume. Okay, Lilibeth, that one makes sense. You, I presume, are Joffrey. You are correct, sir. Friar. No friar here. Who? Where's Silas? I don't see him among you. How would you know about Silas? We have the same employer. I, I guess I had assumed that you would that you would already know where Silas was. Well, last I heard, he stopped at the... The jaunty horn, but no one has seen him since. Mm. No one had seen you since. Well, Sir Silas was on his way back to report to to y'all, to, you know, the Empire. Well, I'm, I'm we, not with the Empire. Oh. Who, who are you? Shantywood, then. I'm with mm. Madame Shantywood. And as soon as he says that name, that Grimalkin jumps up on the table. She's talking about Shantywood. You working for Shantywood? Not like claws come out, hair, tail gets all bushy, and like he starts like stepping back and she says, if you work for Shantywood, you, and then she starts pointing at you all. You work for Shantywood? No. 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 Just you then. Out of my bar. Go on. He's, he's like reaching for his coin purse to like set up and she's like, no, no. 
out. And he just kind of like hands up and he gives you all a nod and he says that I will be at the Horn Stoats rest if you all wish to talk further. Good day. And he heads out and her hair a little bit settles down, but you could just see she's still like cursing under her breath and is, is very rattled. Why the bad blood? Bad blood. I'll tell you the bad blood, that sorceress. She had me, she had me bewitched under her control. Entertain her and her guests. That sounds like her. It's definitely the same shanty would, y'all. Bitch. You seem to know her. I, that would be our experience. I will see her manner. I will see it burn to the ground before I am in the grave. You have, you have dealings with her. You be careful. Well, I can say at this point, our dealings with her are likely done as long as we can avoid any further entanglement so it seems like she's trying to entangle us right now the large breggle the older breggle the battle scarred breggle comes back into the tavern notices that the grimalkin is all out of sorts and he just comes over and he says hey what's what's got your hair up and raised Whimsley, and then she explains there's some asshole, you know, associated with Madame Shanty what was in the tavern, and he goes, oh, okay, okay, easy. Why don't you go take take a break? I got the bar. And then he resumes her, her spot at the bar, tended to the customers. I guess I'll make conversation with the Briggle and just be like, oh, man, that kitty got his tail really fluffed up there. Yep, that's quite the sore spot that time... Those times being bewitched like she was. Does Shanty would have much influence or uh, here in in Langshorn? Or is this is it uncommon to see kind of her representatives here? Oh, that name doesn't come up much around here. Well, I'm sorry that we brought that in here. We did not mean to. It's okay. It happens once in a while. People coming from drag. Hmm. Quite the coincidence that there be an agent of Shanty Wood with someone who does know shanty wood and has a very strong opinion negative if it's not a common thing think that maybe he was actually here to spy on on the grimalkin they seem to be looking at us and taking notes on us and certainly mm. knew our names so i true it, yeah i feel like it is definitely definitely seems like they want us to meet mm. and it may behoove us to just see what's up because we don't want necessarily madam shanty wood stalking us about these Dolmenwood. My guess is, is she's just wanting to keep tabs. Yeah. I say we. I say I agree with Sir Joffrey. I think we meet up with this agent and figure out what's going on. Put all the cards on the table. Might as well. I don't know the Shantywood personally, but I've heard that uh, you've done work for her, and there's nothing, no reason to believe there's antagonistic relationship at the moment. Yes. Why not keep it that way? Sarge, is it? Yes. I uh, put three gold pieces down on the bar and slide it over to him and say, if you would uh, be so kind as to keep an extra eye on our wagon. Of course. This evening, that would be fantastic. Also, <clears throat> we are in the market for obtaining the services of some fighting men, perhaps. If you know of anyone that frequents, that uh, is decent with a sword, uh, looking for work, uh, please direct them towards the inn across the way and ask for either Sir Joffrey or Thomas. He says you might be able to find a couple of people that might be interested in going with you, but you'd have better luck in High Hankle if you're High looking to fill out your ranks. Okay. So um, did you want to order any food here? After the experience with the drink, I don't think I'm in too much of a rush to eat the food. Yeah. <laughs> Bring out a good. catnip salad or something like that. Yeah. yeah. I'm thinking maybe at the inn our luck might be better. This yeah. place seems like they're more suited to uh, feeding horses. Yeah. All right. Uh, so you want to make your way over to... Um, it's probably like mid-afternoon by the point where you start to head over to the Horn Stoats Rest, which is a high-gabled wooden building of overhanging eaves and many-hued lacquered panels. There's a wide, round door topped with a goat's skull, that welcomes travelers and merrymakers. The sign above the door depicts a white stoat with prominent red horns reclining on a luxurious purple couch. Uh, this place already seems a little nicer. 
Mm -hmm. Why would they put a goat's head over the door in a town full of Bragel? Clearly, this is a human establishment. Now, just to just to make sure that the characterization of Lankshorn is correct, Bragel in the town would be a minority. There are a few Bragel, uh, but the majority of the people that you are seeing are human. Although the army of Bragel, right? The army that you or the the yeah that little squad. The leader, yeah, the leader of the <laughs> whatever they call them. The, was it the Burkmaster, right? Platoon. Is he human? Burkmaster. Uh, you haven't seen the Burkmaster yet, but you have heard of him. He's he would be human. And there's the barons that are the Bregel. Well, the Malbli and the uh, Ramius. Yeah. Yeah, I guess we'll go in and we'll inquire about maybe some food because uh, we've got a drink on and and the room, the lodgings. All right. So you step in and. The common room is very a very cramped room. High stools crammed against one wall. A cluster of three tables in the center. And uh, the landlady is a woman, maybe 50 years of age. She has big copper hoops in her ears. And she's currently sitting at one of those center tables eating some pie. Um, she, uh, As you all are entering in, she stands up. Mouthful of food still in. She finishes chewing and she says, Oh, hello. Four, four, four of you. Would you be staying in the common room here tonight? It'd be five of us. Five of you. Okay. Right. And uh, she would charge you for that. And do we see the gentleman that came over here? I'm missing. He is not down here. If you inquire with her about him, she'll say, Oh, he's, he's already, uh, must be your friend. You're right behind him. He's already in the common room. So basically what you have here are common lodgings. So if you're staying here, you're staying with that guy. Are there private lodgings? She doesn't have private lodgings here. It's just the common room. You're like you're buying a bed. Okay. And counts for how cheap it is. Well, I'll go I'll go gather that guy if he wants to have a conversation and uh, he can come out and while we're eating and talk to us. Sure. So you do. So he... he no pushback on that. He comes out and, and gathers with you all, and he says, Well, apologies for the interruption. Um, as you know, our mistress has a bit of a reputation. I would be curious to hear, you all have gone off the grid for some time. I'd be curious to hear tales of what your adventures have led you, where they have led you. Before we get into that, go ahead, Maureen. Um, my... My thought was this, what is your interest? Is it because you wish to relay this information back to Madame Shantywood or because you wish to just know? I mean, you know, I mean, obviously I'm reporting to her. What is her interest in? I mean, we've done business with her before. We've got nothing against her, but, you know, considering that our business is, has been concluded, you know, seems awful strange for her to be sort of checking in on us. And I, and I guess, you know, maybe expecting information from us without anything in return. Well, far be it for me to deal with her business, but her pockets run deep. I mean, if you know something, I'm sure she would be more than willing to name a price and provide that for you. But I'm guessing Silas is out of the picture and he's made his way home. Is that fair? It's we been don't 10 know days. Where... Silas is separated from us and... We had a parting of ways. We don't know exactly where he is. We uh, we had a disagreement. I see. Well, things have been quiet. Yeah, we can't. We don't know whether his intention was to return or to stay in the Dolmenwood, but we do know that he he requested that we we not contact him. Understood. And what of you all? Are you looking for employment? Always. Does Madame Shantywood have business in these parts that she needs, that she has use of adventurers for? She needs influence. There are some things that are in motion, and it would be useful to have some contacts within Lankshorn, specifically the Burkmaster. I hear that he is looking to hire a group potentially, to deliver some supplies. Maybe you might be willing to take him up on that. And this what supplies and where? I don't know. I haven't inquired directly. But if you could get his ear, that would be something worthwhile to Madame Shantywood. Understood. So 
Madame Shantywood is looking to gain some political influence here with the Burkmaster and is hoping to do that through leveraging a relationship that we could build with him. You've been, you've shown that you are, are worthy agents. Um, you did well with recovering the crystals and retrieving the secret. Perhaps, uh, give us a moment, uh, to, to confer amongst ourselves. He does, so and he withdraws I... and gives you space to talk. So at the very least, I think it'd be appropriate to wait for your brother, Joffrey, before we make any firm commitments. We can always softly commit, say, if we happen to interact with the Birdmaster and take on his quest, then we... We can go from... I, yeah, I mean, I don't see why we're all staying in the same inn, and I don't see why he wouldn't give us a day or two to think it over or give him an answer. I guess more just curious what we are... Th we, we all know that Madame Shantywood is not to be trusted. Mm -hmm. But we also know that she could be a powerful ally in the dolmen one you are after true love after all so but but basically if we were to get involved in this it would be firmly firmly basically placing us as political actors in dolmen in this land right we are going to be getting involved <laughs> very much so we're uh, sort of outside of the periphery and more so in the like you know mm. uh, actually trying to influence people and stuff. is that something that we want to do do we want to be taking sides? Do we want to be, you know, we've already seen what can happen in a town if we're viewed as an ally of Madame Shantywood, right? Mm -hmm. um, well, so there, you know, that type of thing could happen more if we are actually agents of Madame Shantywood, you know? We don't have to be her agents to hire and transport something, especially if we make it clear only if it's going in our direction. We can be pawns. We don't have to be like bishops or rooks or whatever. I don't know that we play. She, she's looking for us to gain his favor by doing this thing for him and then to like, you know, sort of, it sounds like she wants us to do kind of the worm tongue thing and kind of like, you know, put some ideas in his head or just be like, oh, yeah, you can trust us. You know, I don't know, kind of influence his uh, court almost, it sounds like, right? Or the town. Go ahead, Maureen. Yeah, I'm glad you explained worm tongue. Well, I'm it, not sure. Thomas, what were you going to say? Well, it, if I'm remembering correctly, Madam Shantywood, the, the likelihood that she is seeking influence with the Burkmeister here is it seemed that there was no love lost between her and Lord Malbleed. It seemed like they were having some conflict. So if she is attempting to influence things, it's I don't want to go too far off into supposition, but I, I do distinctly remember that Malbleed was not looked highly upon in drag. Well, neither was she, mm. right? She was kind of the invisible runner of the town and the, the Burkmeister was seen as kind of like a like a figurehead position that didn't do much right and Madame Shantyhood was running that place. I, I wouldn't say that your impression should be that she had a negative uh, reputation, though. Like, I yeah, think she, did... she was probably seen by the common people in drag as being like, she's the one that actually, like, cares and, like, does something about our problems to a degree. Right. The... The whole bad blood was the uh, negatively influent hogbeard, hog. The, yeah, the the church yes. people that were kind of ensorcelled by the bad meat, more or less. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they thought she was like corrupting the town, but then Correct. turns out they were corrupt. Correct. Okay. Well, I'll say this as my only piece of advice. I think um, you have much more experience with Shantywood, but my experience with Politics as a member of of the court of the the I can't remember his name is the seven a fairy is that it's very easy for pawns to be sacrificed once they are no longer any of use. So once we position ourselves as pawns, just something to keep in mind that we should keep a lookout on our on our backside. Yeah. Well, and I would say, Madam Shanty would Sir Geoffrey brought up that. You know, she can't be trusted, but although her methods might have taken us, I guess, a bit by surprise, she, in our dealings with her, she kept to her word. Yeah, you have a very generous definition of keeping to her word. People, I mean, Sir Silas could have died. She took him from us, took him from us through a trick. Um, 
clearly she has no compunction about ensorcelling and enchanting people to do things against their inclination. Felt bad leaving Marjorie with her, actually. But so I'm not really, I'm not, on the other hand, we did come out of it and I'm confident we could come out well as long as we understand who we're dealing with. That is the most important part. I think that's Joffrey's thing is Joffrey's not totally against getting involved and and sort of becoming a political actor in a way in that way but he's if we work for Madame Chantywood he's sort of going to be expecting the double cross at any moment and and he's you know going to put forth to the party that we if we take this on we should be expecting the double cross and the lack of information and the misrepresentation of the actual danger of what we're doing all of those. Things. I mean, it just, you know, and Joffrey's saying, you know, maybe that means that our price goes up considerably if we work for her, you know, that that um, whatever she's offering, offering, she'll have to double it or something, you know. If she is at odds with Lord Malbleed and uh, what was his name, the blacksmith said that Malbleed is not pleasant, but there were actually, you know, better feelings towards Madame Shanty, would it? It, it may be better for the town it may be better for the town and the people because it i do not see madame shantywood i mean I, I will say this she she may be you know lacking in scruples and such but she uh did keep to her word and it seems that you know generally speaking she's out to make money for herself which i do not have a problem with but uh it seems that the people under her are are, are treated well well enough. Right. Shady, not necessarily evil with a capital E. Sure. Sure. Well. You may disagree with her methods, you know, but. I, I just don't want to share too much information about us, what we've done, what we are thinking about doing. I think we should keep that or, or even what we have. I mean, agreed. That's why Joffrey's kind of lying through his teeth about Silas trying to protect where he's at, what he's doing, keep her out of it. And, you know, I don't think it's any, I, it's none of her business what we're doing. You know, she probably already knows. So. Well, yeah, but we don't have to confirm it for her. Yes. Right. And Madam Shantywood, it seems by all definitions, is an information broker. Her, her power comes from information. And the less, the closer we can keep information to our chest, I think the better we will be in dealing with her. So with that as the kind of setup here, I would say that Sirtel, let me like recontextualize a little bit. What he's asking you to do, you get the sense that it is something that maybe he's tasked with doing. And now that you are here, maybe... Maybe he bungled it or something, but now he's kind of coming to you all to see if you might be able to uh, make some inroads. And he'll tell you specifically why. There is a rumor that the Burkmaster has somebody that he is keeping in his attic that maybe is tied to Malbleet, or he doesn't really know who, what it is. It's, it's a rumor that's out there, and, and Madame Shantywood wants to know who's up there and what he's, what he's concealing. And so by you taking this job on, what he really wants, he wants you to curry favor with him maybe a bit to maybe open up the possibility, get you in the door, so to speak, but maybe to take this task on to kind of curry some favor with him that you might be able to figure out what's, go what's really going on. Gotcha. And for that information, he tells you that he would pay you 500 gold if you can identify that. Okay. I Not would bad. ask him, how much is uh, Shantywood paying you for this information? He would say... None of my business. <laughs> yes. What? All right. Uh, but he says he would be... If you do it, you could go back to Shantywood Isle together, and he would, you know, together you give the report, and he would give you full credit for what has been done and that maybe she might have some bigger work for you then. And you know, it, it wouldn't hurt us. We do have a sword on commission here. We are going to have to hang out at least a little while to pick that up. So it could give us some, some business to do in town until then. And then maybe if we were done conducting our business, we can be about our way and up, up to where we were thinking uh, first flush, thing I flush with our pockets. Because we're, we're looking at about three weeks for that sword to be done. Yeah. 
Well, and maybe we can find out more about our, we can find out more about the whole situation on the ground here too that might make our work easier. Okay, I'm in. As long as I get to get out of the city at least once a week, please. Cool. Yeah. And we'll be heading down. I think the, the manor's like, what, what do you say, a little out of town? Or well, whatever? the the Burkmaster lives in town. Oh, it's in town. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm getting, my, I'm getting my wires crossed. So the Red uh, Red Wraith Manor is north of town, I believe. Yeah, Red, Red that, Wraith Manor, that's that, where, where Malbleed Malbleed is. Malbleed lives. Yeah. So you're not, okay. you're not going to go talk to him, okay, at least yeah, not yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah. Getting my my rulers confused. So if I've got so we're probably at like kind of a resolution for the session. We've got kind of a clear agenda for what we will do next time. Um, so you're going to go to the Burke Masters, kind of get what what is it that he is looking for adventurers for. You'll handle that however you want. But it sounds like you're gonna your goal is to take up his job and see what that's all about. I mean, you might be kind of double dipping here on a reward because the Burke Master <laughs> pay you for whatever his job is, right? Correct. So, cool. Then that's what we will do. Um, you've already paid up for your, you had a meal tonight and you got lodging and everything like that. So no housekeeping to take care of there. So then we would, for the next session, advance one day to the 28th of Chasting. Perfect. So that is, that is going to bring us to the end of this session. Thanks everyone for hanging out with us. We should probably do our, our closing, uh, ritual here too, and do some, uh, Appreciation to the players or player who um, made the session um, a lot of fun to play in. And so I'll kind of pass the floor over to you guys to go through our gratitude. Well, I'll, uh, I'll throw out Maureen. It's good having you back today. And I thought you had a really good, lots of good role playing sessions, just fleshing out your character and driving things. So it's glad to have you back. Thank you. I would you. I will double that. I will throw it out to Maureen. She always, always adds to the session. And when you're not here, you're missed. So I'm going to triple that. That's where I was going. I really enjoyed kind of the the beginning of the session, sort of you know when when you were, you know, uh, gutting the the rabbits and, and uh, we had our little conversation. I felt like that was a good way to kind of start the session and get it going. So thank you. You're you're welcome. I'm I'm going to shout it all right back out at the, at the three of you. I really enjoyed watching the gameplay from when I was gone and not part of it, and it helped me to to really sort of like figure out a way in uh, to 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 connect with you that was authentic. Um, and as I was thinking about it, it just really helped me to understand how connected our characters actually have become and how um, important our characters, I mean, to me, to Lilibeth, you know, thinking about how Lilibeth is going to think about all of this, it really just brought home just how well we have really developed this relationship in our group. So thank you all. Thank you, players. Thank you, audience. Thanks, everyone, for hanging out. We are 20 sites to every story. I hope you all have a good week, and we will see you next time. Yay. Bye, all. Bye. Excelsior.